y'all and welcome back to another Wedding Wednesday. My name is Jane Corley with Pick Visions Media Arts and Photography. If it's your first time here, welcome! Make sure to like this video if you learned something new, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell so you can be notified every time a new video is uploaded every week. In today's episode, we're talking about wedding photographers and wedding videographers. I'm going to give you my 15 tips to picking a wedding photographer and wedding videographer. This video is going to hold a special place in my heart because as a photographer, there's, there's a few things that, that I think are very, very important. First, for starters, this isn't a num in the number category, but do find out what their experience is, how long they've been in business, as well as how many weddings they do every year, and what their guest count comfortability, if that's a word, comfortableness, whatever you want to say, is. Because some wedding photographers, like myself, I only shoot weddings between 50 and 75 people. That's just where my happy place is, that's what I'm comfortable with, that's the kind of weddings that I cover within everything else. But some photographers, they don't take weddings that are less than 150 people. Same with videographers. Having more people means you need to have more coverage, means you need to have more staff on that different category. Also give yourself options to choose from. Don't just find one, think that they're really awesome, and go with them. You need to meet with at least two or three different photographers or videographers to make sure that you narrow down the best choice. Even if their products look really great on the internet or in the products that they provide, they may not vibe with you. So this brings me to my very first tip. My very first tip is make sure that they vibe with you. Make sure that they're the type of people that you can hang out with for an extended period of time. Make sure that they are easy to talk to, that their communication lines are open, that they're going to reflect your vision for your day and your you know, wedding weekend time frame whenever you're getting married. Make sure that they understand that and appreciate your vision. Number two, clarify the must-have shot. I'm not talking about a shot list, I'm talking about the must-have shots. The 20 to 30 photos that they better be in my wedding portfolio. I'm talking, do you want one especially of you and your dad before you walk down the aisle? Do you want one of your mom lacing up the back of your wedding dress? Do you want one of you getting your makeup put on? Do you want you guys doing your first dance or the bouquet toss or must-have photos and it's going to be about 20 to 50 photos that you have to have, must have, no questions asked, within your wedding portfolio. So just be clear on the must have shots. This also goes for, are you more of a posed couple or are you mo more of a candid couple? Do you want your photographer to be responsible for, you know, posing your guests so that everybody looks good, looking into the camera? Are you more of a, you want to sneakily capture people drinking and eating and having a good time and just be more candid. Qualify yourself in one realm or another and that will help you choose the best photographer and videographer because certain photographers and videographers have certain skill sets and are more apt to doing more candid or more apt to doing more posed. You have traditional and classic styles versus you know fun and free spirited. Just make sure to clarify what the vibe of your wedding is, are you more posed, are you more candid, and gotta have shots. Let's move on to number three, schedule. You need to give your photographer and your videographer the schedule of the day, the schedule of even the weekend if they're doing more than one event coverage, and I'm not talking about the really broad stroke schedule. I'm talking about the minute to minute to minute to minute one that you're going to give your coordinator, your photographer and your videographer need that same one. And the reason why is because if you're walking down the aisle and your photographer is standing in the middle of the aisle and you maybe have a second photographer or second videographer in the back, they're going to be in that photo. Make sure to give them the schedule of events as detailed as possible so that they know how to position themselves within the event in their little sneaky corners or in the crowd shots and things like that so that they're not in each other's way and they're not a hindrance to your event flow. Number four, ask about packages. If you're wanting just digitals, they'll probably have a package for that. 
if you're wanting some photo albums and some canvases and you're wanting a YouTube video of a condensed version of the day to share with your guests, with your videographer, be clear about that. Be clear about what you would like and some photographers and videographers will actually customize a package for you and some of them will just have kind of a starting point of, hey, let's go with package B that has digitals, a handful of prints, a photo album, and if you want to add a few more things, we can just have some add-ons. Packages are also going to include time frames. How long do you need them for? Are you going to have them for the entirety of your wedding, anywhere from four to six hours? Or are you going to need them for the entire day when we're talking more eight to 12 hours for your event? That is going to be a significant price difference because you're gonna be paying them for more hours or less hours of work more hours or less hours of coverage. That's going to affect the price point and, and also within this fact you can also ask them about engagement sessions, boudoir sessions if you want, day of, uh, they can even cover your rehearsal dinner if you want, and some photographers and videographers will actually do segments after the wedding day with you and your new spouse having brunch the next day at your honeymoon house if that's something that you want. Just ask, ask and find out if it's something that they're going to do, but do be aware that that's going to affect your cost. As we learned in my budget video a couple videos ago, your photographer and your videographer budget is going to be between 10 and 12% of your overall budget. Number five is inspirations. Go on Pinterest or on the web or to your fellow brides that have gotten married and you really like the way that their photographs were taken or their videos were taken and share those inspirations with your photographer and your videographer so that they can see what your vision is. Because you just telling them, oh, I want sort of a whimsical look and I don't want it to be really, you know, posed. I want to be more candid. That is a wide spectrum of things. That is a, could be a multitude of options, y'all. So if you can give them something to say, oh, okay, now I know what you're, what you're thinking about. Now I know the, the tone of voice and the look to the photos that you're wanting. Giving them examples of things that you like will clarify. Number six, tell them if your ceremony is going to be unplugged or not. I've seen a lot of different brides and grooms and families do this a whole bunch of different ways. If you're going to have an unplugged ceremony, tell your guests that you're going to have an unplugged ceremony. There's no right or wrong way to do it. You can put it, you know, on their chairs, you can put it on a program, you can put it on a sign outside. We actually just had our pastor come out before everybody, you know, came out to line up and we did our processional, come out and tell our guests, hey, you know, don't use your cell phones and tablets. Jane and Jay will share these photos with you guys later on down the road when they get them. They just Unplug ceremony. Please put your phones and your tablets away during this portion of the wedding. And your guests will respect that. You just need to be clear with them. Number seven is a second photographer or videographer. However many guests you have, if you have between 75 and 100 guests, you're probably going to have one photographer. If you're going to have 150 to 200, you're probably going to have two photographers. If you're going to have 250 over, you're probably going to want three or four photographers to make sure the whole day is captured. Same with videographers. If you're tapping into like the 200 range, you're gonna probably want at least three videographers. Just be mindful of the fact that the staff that they have, the amount of coverage that you want to have, that's all done by having multiple people doing coverage of your event. So ask your photographer and your videographer how many people they will have on staff for your event. Number eight is cancellation and insurance policies. I'm not going to say that something's going to happen and you're not going to end up getting married and you know, but, but things happen y'all. Things happen that you cannot plan for that are not foreseen. Ask about cancellation policies because you don't want to be losing thousands of dollars because they didn't have a cancellation policy. This also goes for insurance. If something happens to their equipment, if something happens to your footage after the event, what is their insurance policy to make sure that you get your money back? And I really, I really hope that this doesn't happen for any of you out there watching this video, but if they lose the footage of your event, as I said earlier, the event cannot be done over again, but you shouldn't have to pay for that. Sorry, friend, you lost my footage. I'm not paying you for the services that you're not going to deliver. 
So they need to have insurance to cover themselves for the event. This also goes for if they trip over somebody and break a leg trying to get a photo of you doing the garter toss. They need to be insured for their own well-being. And speaking as a photographer, I am I am LLC'd. I've been LLC'd since I started, and I would suggest it. If you do not have a photographer who is insured, you're just spelling disaster. So make sure to go over the cancellation policies as well as the insurance that that photographer or that videographer has on their staff. Next, number nine, deposits and payment schedule. As I said earlier, your overall cost for your photographer and videographer is going to be 10 to 12% of your overall wedding budget. That deposit is going to be around 50%. I've also seen it, um, you know, more like 33%, but just to be on the safe side, just budget for 50% of your photographer and videographer deposit is going to be paid when you want them to hold the date for you. And until that deposit is paid, that date is not held for you. Then traditionally, a couple months later, depending on what your engagement period is, that next 25% is going to be paid, and then the last 25% will be paid within the month of your wedding. So be clear on payment schedules as well as deposits and how the payment structure is going to be. Number 10 is the timeline for your final images. When am I going to get my things back from you? Most photographers and videographers are going to give you a preview around 30 days after your event and then you're going to get the remaining images as well as all of the products that you ordered between 60 and 90 days after your event. Anything more than that, you should probably go with a different photographer and videographer because they're not prioritizing your event. You need to have somebody who you are hiring on staff who is just as excited about your event as you are and wants to get your products to you so that they can satisfy what their contractual agreements are. Do understand that editing takes time. Don't rush your photographers. I know you're really excited about it, but just bite the bit and know that it's going to take time. Most of the what you're paying for your wedding photographer to do is not event coverage. It's post-production. So your post-production is just going to take time and just understand that it's just going to take time, y'all. Videographers, photographers alike, you want it to be right, you want it to be perfect, so give them the time to provide that perfect product to you and your new husband or wife. This brings me to number 11, the contract. Read your contracts. I'm talking all of the print, not just the fine print, not the big print, all of the print. If you're not a contract person, take it to somebody who is a contract person, either your parents, your aunts, your uncles, a friend, um, you know, somebody you know from a bar that's, re that's really good with contracts. And you can actually even just talk to the photographer and the videographer if you need clarity on the contract. If you need to make adjustments to your contract, you can also do that. So do not be afraid to ask. The biggest thing to look for in your contract is where are the rights to these photos going? The next is where are these photos going to be used other than giving me my products? And if the rights are going to you and the photographer, just look to make sure if they're going to be using those photos in their marketing materials or in their web-based platforms. If you're okay with that, then fine. But if you're more than more of like a private person and you don't want those photos going on social media or going on their websites for promotional and marketing purposes, that's going to be in your contract and you need to have it taken out of your contract if that's not something that you want to be included. I'm going to slide into number 12, which kind of goes off number 11, is how are my photos going to be given? Usually this information is probably going to be in your contract information or even in your package information. But are you going to get digitals? Are you going to get the negatives? Are you going to get the prints? Are you going to get, what, what are you going to get from your images guaranteed? Usually the digitals in this day and age, you're going to get the digitals, you're going to get the negatives, but you need to ask. This brings me to number 13, ask for references, ask for references. You are hiring these people to do a job. So when you are being hired to do a job, don't you have to put the information for your references for that person hiring you to go and look at your work and look at who you've worked with and get honest opinions about what it is to work with you? 
ask for references. They will provide them, and if they don't, then that's real shady, y'all. So ask for references and call those people. Figure out what it is to work with them. Some of these photographers, yes, their work looks really, really good, but they were a nightmare on the day of. They just didn't have themselves together. They were just a hot mess. Yes, their photos look good because post-production is a miracle worker these days, but if this person is good on the outside for the 11 months of your engagement, but on the day where it actually matters, they're a hot mess, do not hire that person because that's going to result in a terrible experience and you don't need any more headaches on the day of your wedding. I guarantee it. You're going to have enough that you're not even counting on, but you're going to, you just don't want any other headaches. Let's just put it that way. Number 14, ask about their equipment. I'm not talking about what kind of camera they, they have. I'm talking about lighting. If you're going to need additional lighting for your event, be clear with your photographer and your videographer about that. You also don't want to have them plop a light stand in the middle of your dance floor just because that's what they need. They need to be a fly on the wall for the event and should not be seen. You're covering the event. You're not a distracting to the event. So find a videographer and a photographer who's kind of a little bit more sneaky. If you can get your photographer and videographer to the location of your venue around the time that your wedding is going to be, so if your wedding's at 4 o'clock and your reception is at 6 o'clock, see if you can get your photographer to visit your venue around that time of day so that they can identify what the sun is going to do and what kind of equipment they're going to need especially if this is an outdoor ceremony or if your ceremony and reception is in an indoor venue with a bunch of windows that really relies on the light from outside coming in. Number 15, my last tip for this video, is going to be what do we, the hiree, need to provide to our employee, the photographer or the videographer? Do you need lodging covered? Do you need transportation covered? Are we going to be responsible for paying an additional fee for you to transport your materials to our location? This should all be in your contract information, but just make it clear with that photographer and that videographer exactly how the fees and everything is broken down, especially if you're going to be getting married at a destination or somewhere where that photographer is not part of that hometown. If you're going to be traveling that photographer to that hometown or to that new location, then you're going to have to pay for travel fees. You're going to have to pay for their lodging. So when you're looking for a photographer or videographer and you're not getting married someplace where that photographer or videographer is from, see if you can find a videographer or photographer that is from that area if that cost is going to be a concern to you. So for instance, if you're getting married in Savannah, Georgia, Find a photographer who is either based out of Savannah, based out of Charleston, based out of Jacksonville, some place that's within two or three hours from your event location, and it should be fine that that photographer and videographer will just travel back home afterwards. You will need to have a vendor meal, of course, for these people, but your caterer will take care of all that information. But there are a few extra costs if you're bringing a photographer in from a location that's going to be more than an hour and a half or two hours away from your event location. So just keep that in mind. So those are all my tips for you guys today. I hope that this video was helpful on how to successfully choose a photographer and a videographer for your wedding and event weekend or whole week event. I hope that your wedding planning is going well. If you have any comments or concerns and um, you know anything you really want to add to this video, please, please, please leave it in the comment section below. I would love to hear from each and every one of you. Make sure to like the video if you learned something new. Subscribe and ring the bell. Feel free to share with all of your fellow brides and bridesmaids and families of the bride. Just share it y'all like i said leave it in the comments below if you guys have any questions or concerns or anything you want to add to this video and until next time jane corley with pick visions media arts and photography see you later guys